dad's side of the family is from Germantown. Uh, grew up on Stafford Street, so not too far from the shrine. Uh, growing up, grandpa and my dad and his mom, they all would go to the shrine all the time. So um, after, I guess my dad grew up and they moved out of Germantown. They still, they, they kind of went once in a while. The turning point in my connection to the shrine big time was my grandfather's death sophomore year of high school and uh, it kind of was a tough time very upsetting and uh, it was shocking and, and he was older but he was just you know he was like the, a very big part of the family glue of the family it was probably my first big loss um in my life so i, I took it wrong i took it the wrong way and was very angry with god and didn't want to be you know involved in the faith and push him away and stuff like that so i was uh sophomore junior year at Carl, I was at Carl Dockerty High School, and my, my family lived in Willow Grove at the time. I really didn't want to be involved in the faith. I was angry. I was not in a good place. Bad friendships, bad decisions. Not the best kid in that time frame. And I was a lot to do with my grandfather's death. My dad, you know, one Monday night said, you know, let's go get in the car, because I was going to drive my mom crazy by the end of her rope about my attitude and all that stuff. And we're going to we're going to church. I'm like, church on a Monday night? Why are we going to church? And, go to the shrine, Rack of Smell Shrine, and uh, I go in, my dad asks, like, you know, why don't you get to confession? And so I went, told my sins, you know, behind the screen, got my, you know, my did my laundry list of sins, got my penance, never been to this, you know, priest in this confessional before or anything like that, and as I got my uh, penance and I'm about to walk out, and again, I really wasn't with it, the priest, I'm about to open the door, the priest says, stop. And I'm like, stop, was one of my sins that bad? Like, what happened? You know, did I do something wrong or something like that? No way I've got to stop the confession. And he just said for a couple times, he said, don't be afraid he's with you. Don't be afraid he's with you. I didn't say anything about, to the priest about my grandfather. I didn't say anything about uh, any, like anything. I didn't give him any hints. But you know, those words really comforted me. And as I walked out the door, it was kind of like a conversion. Like, you know, my grandfather won't be like this the rest of my life. And he was a good man. He was a man of faith. Don't be afraid he's with you. That It kind of clicked hearing those words as I walked out of the confessional. And then when I prayed, I started to pray and do my penance, the priest walked out to do the, um, the novena. And that's where it kind of like, I guess I said, would say the beginning of the calling to the priesthood began. So the idea that I actually was thinking about being a priest at that time was like, I can't write. But that's where it started. It was in that conversion moment in that shrine. And that's why I attest a lot to the Marcus Mel Shrine that uh, like that's where my vocation was born. And that's where my change of heart happens. So that's why I, I give a lot of credit to the to the Miraculous Medal and to the Blessed Mother and uh, you know the Vincentians and uh, it's a special place. Uh, I don't know where I'd be if I you know didn't have that experience. But uh, I'm thankful to God that He gave it to me through that through that through the Miraculous Medal shot.